When I'm shooting, I do a lot of takes on all the different camera setups. And in the end, what I do is that I tell the actors, now we have five takes left. The last take, then I take the whole crew to stand behind the camera and I have a gong and I hit that gong, you know, like, okay, everybody finish, like last take and I hit the gong. Boom. And when the sound is completely silent, then you get one of the actors to start the scene with their line. Hello, my name is Ruben Östlund. I'm the director and screenwriter of Triangle of Sadness. This is Note on the Scene. When you said you were going to pay for food today. At the end of the meal, you said, thanks, tomorrow I'll get, I'll get it. Sure, but then you picked up the bill and I thought you wanted to pay, so I said, thank you, honey. Okay, but it was there for such a long time, I mean... I didn't see it. You didn't see it. The scene, uh, the bill scene, I call it, uh, is actually something that happened to me and my wife eight years ago. It was in the beginning of uh, our relationship. Uh, I wanted to impress her, so I invited her to Cannes. Every night I brought her out to dinner. So the first night and the second night and the third night, I was always paying the bill. But at a certain point, I started to feel like um, I can't play this role all the time. I like her too much. So I have to take the bull by the horn and bring this up in some way. This is a situation that I love because this is a dilemma. The main character, Carl, he has uh, two or more choices and none of them are easy. Thank you, honey. It's so sweet of you. And here we see first that Shobi is looking at the bill. I hope that the audience sees that also. And then, are uh, there, and we all know what that means. You should pick up the bill now, Carl. And Shobi, uh, Dean, had a very, very skillful way of like sending those uh, eyes over to, to Harris and, uh, uh, and using the pauses in the right way. You could tell that, uh, that, that she really, really skillful in, in when it comes to timing and, and it comes to understanding the, the dynamics of a scene. And here in the background, we can see also that, uh, that we have the window and in the opposite of Carl, Carl is quite Cornered. He has a wall just behind his back, but uh, when we were shooting it, we wanted it to be that uh, Yaya yeah, yeah, have uh, uh, more space behind her back. And like in this area, like that, uh, there's much more space. A little bit like, that, okay, that, that's where the freedom is and Carl is completely cornered. And in order to get to the freedom, you have to get through Yaya yeah, yeah first. First of all, I think that when we were shooting this, that it was important that you could see all of Carl's body because it's so much in the body language that, that tells us about how he's trying to deal with the situation. We try to put uh, Carl uh, uh, a little bit more in the darkness and uh, with his uh, back towards the wall. And uh, that was in the intention of trying to show that he is cornered. When we were shooting the shot, it was actually a little bit tighter. He was uh, a little bit bigger in the frame, but afterwards I decided to digitally zoom out a little bit because I wanted to have uh, in connection uh, uh, in the frame uh, all of the upper part of the body because you see so much in the in the body language that expresses like the kind of awkward awkwardness he's trying to deal with. When I was doing the storyboard picture, I think the hand that was close to the to the bill was also something that was important. When I'm working on the script, then I like to draw storyboard pictures. I spent quite long time to, to draw these pictures because being concentrated in drawing the storyboard pictures makes me think about the scene in a different way than when I'm writing the script. I'm working with small, small details. So if you look at the storyboard picture, you can see that his hand is in the image. But in the storyboard picture, we don't see a uh, call. We only see Yaya that has the uh, makeup mirror in front of her face, like covering her face in order to avoid like seeing the, the bill. And I enjoy so much doing these storyboard pictures because if you want to work on the small, small details, you have to find a way of making yourself concentrated on the actual topic for a long time. And drawing and you're sitting in the computer because I draw these images in Photoshop and then all of a sudden you come up with a great idea that is connected to the scene in some way. Do you like the place? The little stuffy. The little stuffy. <laughs> I don't know, you look like you were thinking this. No, I'm not. I'm not. Cool. 
So here the music stops uh, and it's supposed to be like music that you hear from the restaurant. Uh, but we worked quite much with the timing of it. But it goes quite often from like a little melancholic to easy and flying, like a little butterfly. And if you, if you listen now, when Carl is deciding to, okay, I'm going to bring up this topic, you can hear on the music. <laughs> what? I don't know, you look like you were thinking this. Oh, no, I'm not. Cool. This scene, uh, when we were shooting it, we actually had three days uh, of shooting. And I like to spend a lot of time on set together with the actors, even if we have a, a script that is kind of precise. And what I ask them to do is that if they feel that there's something in the script that they don't believe in saying, and then they have to tell me. They have to stop me and they have to say, I don't believe in these lines. And then as a director, it's my uh, task to try to change the setup so it becomes possible for them to say these lines. And uh, when I'm shooting, I do a lot of takes on all the different camera setups. So I think we maybe did around 20 takes on Shalby's position. From take one, and then we're going further and further, trying to sculpt the scene, making it more precise. And in the end, what I do is that I tell the actors, now we have five takes left. And then I do a countdown. Five, four, three. And it's a way of trying to create a very intense moment where it is almost like a football game uh, that we are playing together. And we have to win this game together now. The last take, then I take the whole crew to stand behind the camera. Uh, and I have a gong. And I hit that gong, you know, like, okay, everybody finish, like last take. And I hit the gong. Boom. And when the sound is completely silent, then you get one of the actors to start the scene with their line. I don't know, you look like you were thinking this. Oh, no, no. Cool. Come on, I can tell you something wrong. Just talk to me, what is it? When I was uh, stepping over and doing an English language film, uh, I think it was important for the actors to take quite big responsibility of how they put the words sometimes. So when I had read this, uh, wrote the script that I, I talked to them about the script, they were allowed to change some lines. Some lines I wanted them to know we, we have to keep it in that way, even if it's not correct English. But other lines they were allowed to, to give me a suggestion. Yeah, it was a little bit of a challenge to me to try to get the small nuances in, in the language. Come on, I can tell you something wrong. Just talk to me. What is it? No, I just, when you say, when you say thank you, honey, like that, I mean, you don't really give me an option but to pay. I like also when you see that uh, the actors dare to look uh, at their, um, the other actor for a long time. And it can be quite hard, like socially, to, to like, lock the eyes of another person for that long time. But that is something that I try to encourage them doing when, when we are uh, shooting the scenes. We worked for quite a long time to find Yaya. Yaya is inspired of a friend of my wife that is a model. So it was a hard character to play because it has to be someone that's very, very self-confident at one point. And then uh, when the shift in the power hierarchy happens, have to be able to play low status. And I really didn't find someone that I thought fitted the role perfectly. But then my wife uh, uh, gave a suggestion to me, she works in the fashion industry, about uh, an actress and a model that came from South Africa, uh, Sholbe Dean. Uh, so I think it was maybe two or three months before the shooting should started actually, uh, that Sholbe flew to Gothenburg where, where I live. Uh, and we had an improvisation in the office. And then I asked her, okay, in which way can you make it as hard for me as possible to actually uh, deal with this situation? And uh, uh, Sholby uh, is like such a, was such a switch person, uh, uh, all, all the situations around uh, the improvisation, but as soon as you said action, she could go and play high status in such a skillful way. Uh, and uh, it was kind of easy to, to decide uh, on her to get the part after that improvisation. This is an observation because it's something I've noticed. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, we could split the bowl if you like. No, no, no. no oh, I can whip out a, a calculator and we get it. No, no, okay. You need to. <laughs> How many glasses of wine did you have? Oh, sure, like, sure. Like Shut more, up. Right? Okay, that's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. Yeah. I think it all evens out, you know? You go on a roller coaster ride, a very emotional one, where you sometimes almost manage to get friends again. But then something happens and then you're super far apart. It is interesting with these fights that you have early in the relationship because the consequence can be that you're not going to be together anymore. Don't you remember last night you said you were gonna... You said you were gonna pay for food today. At the end of the meal you said, thanks, tomorrow I'll get, I'll get it. Sure, but then you picked up the bill and I thought you wanted to pay, so I said, thank you, honey. One of the reasons that I picked uh, uh, Harris Dickinson to play this scene uh, was because this scene was uh, the scene that I used when I was uh, casting. And what was great with Harris, he was, uh, had such a strong uh, expression of feeling cornered. And, and you can see in his face how he's dealing with the dilemma. Sure, but then you picked up the bill and I thought you wanted to pay, so I said thank you, honey. Okay, but it was there for such a long time, I mean... I didn't see it. You didn't see it? I... No, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see it or I didn't notice it. it was, we were just having a nice dinner. The title, Triangle of Sadness, it comes from this wrinkle that I have that you get from making feature films, definitely. I can try to... Like, it's this. And in Swedish, it's called... Uh, Trouble... Wrinkle. Uh, it's basically a term when it comes to beauty surgery. Uh, and uh, it comes from a, from a friend of mine that was sitting and having a dinner together with a, uh, a beauty surgeon that all of a sudden says, oh, I can see you have a deep triangle of sadness, but no worries, we, we fixed that with Botox. <laughs> you didn't see the bill when it got put on the table? No, I didn't call. In the three last films that I have done, Force Majeure, The Square, and Triangle of Sadness, you can almost um, consider it a little bit of a trilogy where I'm focusing on, on being a man in, in contemporary times. And when the man and the expectations of the man is ending up a dilemma uh, where we want to behave in a different way.